Hi folks, welcome back. This is Christmas week. Wouldn't call it a bonus episode, but it's the only one we got to shoot this week. Uh, I'll give you a quick update on what I'm doing. I just finished this. A customer in uh, in uh, Colorado that wanted a crosscut and a dovetail in this Claro walnut. I don't know if you can see it as well as I can, but it's gorgeous stuff. Finally got this one done. Just working on on, on his other one. Um, show you over here. Got some real. Had a little bit of time to work on some handles. Shouldn't have, because I should have be working on the shop. But I'll show you what I've got. This one, Jake wants me to get done. This is the Vera wood, and uh, I'll find that later. Thank you. Yellow when you cut it, and then it rapidly goes back to being green. Really cool stuff. Can't wait to get a finish on them, see it light up. This is another piece of that uh, maple burl, and that's going to be really pretty too. Sanded, but the face, the flat part hasn't been finished. This one is ready for a, yeah, this one's actually ready to have a finish put on it. This is that pink ivory. I'm really curious to see what that looks like. There's the other matching walnut, Claro walnut handle. There's the holly one. Remember I showed it to you? Curious to see. I hope it doesn't yellow when I put the oil on it. I want it to stay nice and white. Now it's, it's dirty here because I haven't finished that part. I have to finish... I have to finish the brass in place, then take them out, polish them separately, and then go ahead and finish off the handle. And the uh, Fiddleback Maple's been really popular. We've sold a lot of them. I'm way behind on this. Over here, had a customer order a full set, five white oak handles. I got four of them done, waiting on the fifth one. I don't have the brass finished for the, uh, uh, the new bench crosscut. And as you look around and see, oh, one more thing I've been working on. Had a terrible time with our jigs that I used to make the handles. And uh, anyway, so I had to take the bottom off. Believe it or not, this is, uh, this is crazy carpet material. Stuff that you slide down hills with. So I glued that on and hopefully that's going to solve the problem. The second one's almost finished. Other than that... Still, we've got, found someone that's going to come and work on the motor so we can get that bandsaw up and running. Did I show the new bandsaw I got? Yes. Did? All right. Let's go back to work. So what I want to do next, and I'm uh, anxious to get finished on this, I want to put the back in, as I mentioned, so that when I'm playing in that, it doesn't flex. But I don't have as much air... Um, uh, depth as I thought I was going to. I have just a quarter of an inch. So I wanted to use I wanted to use the Baltic birch just because it's a better product. But this stuff measures a quarter of an inch. So by the time I put a layer of either leather or felt that's going to raise that up above, and that's completely unacceptable. Certainly not going in and cutting that down. So I've got some of the cheaper plywood, but the face side looks just as good, and that's the only part you're going to see. Now this stuff is undersized quite a bit. That measures three sixteenths, so that'll give me that'll give me enough. And I don't mind this being a little bit proud, but I certainly don't want the back to be proud. So. I want to cut this to fit, and I want it to fit. I want it to fit perfectly. So we'll get a length, and then we'll trim it down. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I better write this down because I know I'll. So for length, We're uh, 20 and 11 sixteenths on that end, and same thing there. But I'm going to go, I'm going to go 20 and three quarter. And for width, 11 and 13 would do. 11 and 13. Oh, I'm sorry. That's 10 and 13. 
10 and 13 sixteenths. Okay. This is not 20 inches wide, so that's not going to work. So we have a new guy, Ken Anthony, I think I told you this, has come to work. Ken's been a member of our online workshop ever since we started it. He's local and uh, loves it here, so he tells me. <laughs> but he's great, just eager to learn, do stuff. And uh, got to love the work ethic of that last generation. I shouldn't say last generation, older generation. That'll get me in trouble too. Anyway, so he went down, he went, and all the mats, the trim was coming apart. So he turned them over and he put tuck tape. And if you haven't done this, you might want to. Put tuck tape on, on all the seams, except that one. And uh, keeps everything together. All right, 20 and 3 quarter. Now this end is factory, so I want to stay far enough away from that. So I'll go out here. Uh, 20 and 3 quarter, I'm going to go 21 and a quarter. Get away from that. Ah, it's a bit dangerous. Still haven't found a place where I want to keep those. Ten and thirteen sixteenths. I'm going to cut that eleven, and then come back and trim the other side as well. Oh wow! There's a downside to this stuff. Look at it. The veneer is so thin. It's just paper thin on that top side. That's the side that they sand. That looks bad. I wonder if that was out near the end. Well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take the time to change the 
change the blade and put that negative angled cross cut in there. We'll pick the camera up as soon as I got this uh, changed out. Okay, I changed the blade out. Now this is a thicker blade. This is an eighth versus whatever those thin kerf are. So I have to measure because the setting from here to here is going to be different with the thin kerf because the thin kerf is going to go that way by the difference. So if you're wondering why I'm using a tape measure. Actually, I only need to do it when I get close. I hope I can actually do this, meaning cut this stuff without having that splinter. I'll pick an extra half an inch that way. Should never have bought this stuff. Now, show you how much cleaner that cuts on the back side. Not perfect, but much better. No tear at all on the top side. So, I'm going to go. I don't have to stop that to check. That's 20 and 3 quarter. I'm sure I told you this before, but the other option you have is to go with a zero clearance insert. This is the insert, table insert, and a zero clearance means there's no kerf opening in it. You bring the blade up through it, so now when you make a cut, the wood is supported directly beside the edge of the blade. Just similar to closing a stroke down on a hand plane. And this stuff looks good on both sides. Ten and thirteen sixteenths. I'm a little heavier than that according to the fence. Take a little bit more. Okay, that'll be the inside. This is the back side. So the first thing we want to do is is get that uh, shoot it. Now I've got the high angle blade in my five and a half. And I just sharpened this one the other day. Still be good. This is my number six. for the sake of a couple of seconds of work. I'm going to take that blade out and put a fresh edge on it. I don't know if somebody's used this plane since I last sharpened it. I don't want that splintering. Give me just a second. What are you going to do, film it? Sure. Well, here we go. 
300 grit. Bring that 16,000 being flat. Set the blade on the primary, come up two or three degrees. About 10 seconds, get a burr. Flip over here, come up a little bit higher. 10 seconds of work on the 16,000. One or two degrees higher than you were on the previous stone. Then downward pressure in one corner for three seconds. Opposite corner for three seconds. These are the new, new uh, sharpening rolls that Jake's got us. And what's nice about it is it spans, oh rag, it spans the full length of the stone. Is it a little thicker than the last one? Yeah, it is, but I mean, it doesn't make much of a difference in terms of changing the angle. Toothpick in there. Get that in position and lock it down. newsletter coming out first of the week is all about sharpening we just shot a video tonight on grinding primary bevels and I demonstrate that new uh, wheel we're going to start carrying we should have them in stock or we should have them on the site this week and if you don't know what I'm talking about it's this it's a solid steel wheel that has, uh, this is 120 grit, so it has diamond, just like the Trend diamond plate, it has diamond embedded on this face and on this edge, so you can use it on either side. Uh, we've been using, we've had this in here for five, maybe six months. We do all the, uh, all the uh, 17 degree chisels that we sell, we do all of the um, uh, half blind chisels, and it still cuts like it did the day we put it on, amazingly fast. I mean, the other big deal is it doesn't heat up. So because this is so thick and heavy, it acts like its own heat sink. I, I, we, we ground a uh, primary bevel on one of the IBC blades, and I had a fair bit of grinding to do. And when I was done, it was, it wasn't even, it was, it was barely warm to the touch. So pretty impressed. Only downside is I think that's $180 or something like that, but and you don't have to dress them. And yeah, you never have to dress it. You don't have to balance it. You put it on and it works. I have no idea what the lifespan is, but like I said, based on the use that we give it, it's still going strong. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of a uh, chamfer just to keep that middle section from tearing out. Come on, cut. Is it cutting and I'm not seeing it? So this hand back here is kind of pushing in that direction, keeping it tight to the fence and keeping it fed into the plane. Okay. Now I don't I know this isn't perfectly square because you remember we made that little bit of an adjustment on the baseline and that threw it out ever so slightly. So I've got to compensate for that. I don't want to be scratching this thing, so the reason why I'm picking it up to move it. Now, actually, what I should have done is trude this surface first. And then I'll use that as a base, and then I'll square, or I'll, I will, not square, I'll trim the ends based off of that long edge. Let's 
It's a little bit too much. A little bit difficult starting out in mid air. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to just designate this my reference edge. Sorry. Turn that off so we won't be interrupted again. Okay, so we stay tight to this and then move over. And now what we'll do is adjust this edge based off of this lower reference surface. So we need to trim up here. So what I'll do is go, actually when you do that you've got to lift off while you're still moving forward, in other words you leave that skin tag for lack of a better description. I'm not going all the way, I did that time. Now, this is not, um, this isn't straight, and I knew it wasn't, that's the reason why I'm putting this in, because I need, I need uh, this back to hold this straight. So I've got to fix that before I can use this as a reference. If I squeeze it like that. Well, that's still quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to mark that. You see a pencil around here, Frick? I had one. Somebody commented the other day, you're just like me, always searching for a pencil. It's like one thing back there. No, no more. And use a pen. I need to take that off. So each stroke is going to go a little bit farther. No, wait a minute. I'd rather, rather have that clamped in place so it doesn't move around on me. I haven't gone all the way to the end. I will on that stroke and then I'm going to do one more. a little different. I'm going to uh, I'm going to put a shim in here. Try that. 
Oh, that's close. Still got a bit of a little bit of a gap down here, just a little bit more. Um, add something to that. Oh, you know what? Pause for just I'm not don't have to pause. Just I just saw that and I got I got a few new members to welcome. This has been in my pocket for a while. Uh, Martin Chick from Leamington, Hampshire, UK. Welcome back. William Mannering from Rio Linda, California. David Long from Berkeley, California. Sharon Jordan from Leeds, UK. Michael Curry from Devlin, Wisconsin. Tom Rounds from Orlando, Florida. Welcome, Tom. James Dant from Lewisport, Kentucky. George Adams from Mary Mack, New Hampshire. Welcome back, George. Chris Toppler from Portsmouth, UK, and Herman Dobbs from Oak Island, North Carolina. Just spoke to him the other day. Welcome, Herman. All right, that is going to be my... Orlando, you're going to Orlando, aren't you? <laughs> and taking you? Yes, you're taking me. My generous wife. <laughs> I was on the radio this morning, I mentioned it. What were we on the radio for? Talking about my podcast. With, what with, radio? Uh, with Todd, Todd's new show. Oh, were you? Halifax. He asked me if I was taking any trips, and I said my generous father-in-law is taking me to Florida. Who is that? I only have one. So there will be an uptick in YouTube production. Actually, we're going. I'll announce it now. We're going to. I'm going to teach. <laughs> They'll be on the beach. I'll be teaching. Uh, we're going to do workshops. This will be the early in the month of March. Definitely in. The uh, Tampa store, which is actually Clearwater, the Woodcraft store in Clearwater. Possibly the Woodcraft store in Orlando, same time frame. And also possibly the other Florida Woodcraft store, which I can't at this time remember where it is. It's not Sarasota. Stay tuned. We'll be, I'm teaching in, uh, let me get this off my mind so I can focus on what I'm doing. I'm teaching uh, middle of February in Ventura, California. We'll be in Seattle uh, the 14th, 15th, something like that, of March. We'll be at the Toronto Wood Show, which is a new show if you're anywhere near. And that's going to be around the middle of February, middle to the end of February. It's a rough month. You can take me to that one, too. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, now what I'm going to do, uh, probably going to get this to fit. The problem is I'm having to try to pull this into position at the same time I'm doing these ends. Well, I already pulled the stinking wood off of this opposite end. I'm going to come over here. Let's see what we got for length. Okay, so I've got a little bit of extra here. If I can make this, if I can line this up to this corn, this end, and get it so that it fits, then I just have to keep taking the same amount off until it eventually is the right length. You understand what I mean? Do you understand what I mean? Yes. You do not. A little bit. How much? Probably less than the people watching. Shoot. I see I got a big bow right here. So it's hard to uh, actually get this lined up when it's sticking way up out over there. Um, maybe I can pull that in.
Okay, so now you see what I've got to remove up there, and I'm looking at that thinking I'm gonna even have have enough. I still gotta finish this outside edge, that's why I'm not worrying about putting a clamp on here. Okay, so that's that is pulled tight. And I've got a gap up here. I've got a gap up here that's ooh, almost a sixteenth. Um, actually, it's probably closer to a thirty-second. Okay, let me let me guess at this. take that off put a mark on there because I don't want to remove any material from that corner so when I lay that up like this that's obviously too much so we'll take that out and that's about right so if you look over here on my opposite shoulder so I'm touching here. You see the gap I have up there. So with this shim in place, by the time I get down to right there, that should be the right amount off. I'm going to blade out a little. Thing to see where I'm not, no longer making contact. I'm gonna try that. My fear is that I've run out of room here, or I made this too short. Right on. Now, and that should fit up there. So before I go any further, what I need to do now, uh, I need to measure from here to here and from here to here and see if it is parallel. So that that measures just under 10 and 13 sixteenths and down here it's 10 and 13 sixteenths so it is slightly less uh, I wonder if I can mark that with a knife So if I keep that tight right here and come over here, now I'm going to get my headgear so I can see a little bit better. Okay, pull that in tight. Actually, I'm going to bring it up a little bit so it's touching in the middle, right up in the end. Can move it back a bit so I can. I'm having to guess at this because it's, I can't get down to the bottom. Okay, now I'll do the same thing on this end.
Ooh, that's almost. Almost. So. I'm just going to paint this so I know when I'm there. Now, I need to switch out shooting boards and get the long one. How are we for time, Frick? Uh, about eight minutes. Seriously? Yeah. We've been at this for over a half hour? Yep. For some reason, and I'm glad, I, don't, I no longer feel rushed like I always did. Maybe I'm taking too much time, but I'm trying to work at more of a normal pace. Too heavy, way too heavy. Pull the blade in a little bit more. Now, before I go any further, this is turned around, wasn't it? Okay, that's still too tight. Let's try this end. Just about. Pull the blade in a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to pull that away from the fence so that the plane is actually following the edge of the plywood as opposed to following this part of the shooting board. That's snug. Don't have to worry about expansion. This is not going to move. It's all wood in its length. Okay, that's got to come off. more blade. Now I'm avoiding coming all the way to the end. I will come this time. That's snug. That's still too tight. Not going to come all the way back here yet. This is a bit of a bump in the middle. Now I'll take a full length. I will, I will undercut that slightly when I get close, but it's not quite there yet. Full length. I 
Now I'm just going to more or less work that first couple layers of veneer. Just cut a little bit of a bevel. I can't make this too tight because I've got to be able to get it, put it in and get it back out again. Just need to Make sure that I'm actually taking material off here. <laughs> Gotta resist the urge to get impatient and take off too much. Okay, so that's that's sitting down there nicely. But not here. Okay, that's this one's fairly straight. This one's one's got the bow in it. Still got to get some more material off of this. Okay, before I go any further, I've got to uh, I've got to drill the holes for the screws in this, or I'm going to end up putting it in and not be able to get it out without wrecking it. Pen mm -hmm. Pencil was in my pocket the whole time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't want to go overboard with this, but if we had one, two, three on the ends. Do that one first. You want to stay away from the edge of that, so we'll come over here an inch. And an inch. And then one in the middle, which half a ten and three quarter is five and three eighths. One inch, five and three eighths, ten. Same thing on this one, one inch. And this one we would go one and then one two. So we get our two one inch ones. And then we need to divide the space in the middle by three. So we have we have eighteen and three quarter. So six, twelve, eighteen, um, six and a quarter, six and a quarter, and six and a quarter is twelve and a half, and six and a quarter is eighteen and three quarter. 
got to be impressed with that math. One, six and a quarter, 12 and a half, 18 and three quarter, and one inch. Okay, so we come back, drill those. I'm just going to drill the holes in these just in case I have to be able to get this out. I can put a screw in the hole without ruining anything. And then we'll do the final little bit of trimming to get that in there. I want it to be perfect. Then we're going to go ahead and plane and, sa and lightly sand these two surfaces. And then the exterior is done. Uh, that means the next move would come in, put a finish on the inside of this. I'll put a finish on the outside as well. And once that's done, we can go ahead and get the felt, uh, mount the pieces, and put this thing together. All right, still got to figure out where we're going to hang it. Jake wanted to do that French cleat, but I, we just don't have the we don't have the means. We have to figure out something else. Got to be something clever too, because this is now flush on the back. Could do some keyholes in this. We'll figure something out. All right, we'll see you next week.